Lesoi Fua, Maua Malilangi Mama, Talo Falava, and welcome to Pasifika Wa. With Christmas just around the corner, and as we prepare to say goodbye to 2021, which has sometimes been a challenging year as the country and the world grapple with the COVID-19 global pandemic. However, we look to the future with optimism and hope. And on the hope that the first report, Te Rau Tira, into the well-being of people in Aotearoa, New Zealand, that was released last week by the New Zealand Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission. Te Rau Tira signifies the commission embarking on a journey to understand the well-being in Aotearoa. We're very fortunate this morning to be joined by key leaders in our community in this sector who uh, played a huge role in Te Rau Tira. We have with us the Chair of the Expert Advisors who reviewed Te Rau Tira, Sharon Shea, and also Jemima Tia Tia Seath, who was appointed to the inaugural Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission and was also one of the sixth panelists on the New Zealand Government 2018 Mental Health and Addiction Inquiry. We say to you both, very good morning, Talo Falava, kia ora koutou. Thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, I guess first off, the report, um, I did my very best to try and read it and soak it in, and it is ex excellent and insightful. But can I ask uh, you both, um, how does one make sure all the messages in this report get out to the, the wider community? Oh, um, I guess it's knowing your community for a start. And, and being able to adapt that report in different situations, because obviously it is very malleable. And however people take that up is entirely up to them within their environment. Um, and it speaks to all New Zealanders. But what's really poignant about the whole report is that you feel a real deep, deep reflection of Tao Māori and um, efforts to help more underserved populations, including Pacifica peoples. Kia ora, yes, um, I, I total call what Jemima has said. Um, tēnā koutou katoa ngā mahi nui, ngā mahi aroha ki a koutou, ko waiau, uh, no Ngāti Rangi nui, Ngāti Hawa, Ngāti Hene, Ngāti Hakoa hau, ko Sharon Shea, toko ingoa, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Well, what a great pleasure to be here, uh, uh, Gladys, and um, thank you very much for the opportunity to call it all today. And um, to Jemima, always a a wonderful experience to not only see you, but also to hear your wisdom and intellect. So ngā mahi nui ki a koe te rangatira, um, Thanks. Um, in terms of that korero, I, I agree with Jemima in terms of um, how do we get the messages across. One of the important things that we discussed in the Wellbeing Commission, um, and as part of my role in terms of chairing the expert advisory group, Although, to be honest, I don't really know how expert we were, but anyway, <laughs> um, is that we need to enable people to see themselves, eh, to see themselves in this mahi, in this work. So um, whilst we have a tangata whenua and tangata tiriti framing at the moment, we were very clear that we needed to have a Pacific People's Explicit framing as well so one of the opportunities moving forward is to develop a, a view of the outcome framework that is very pacific people focused so that's another great way of getting the message across and um, that's on the cards for the commission um, to do in the new year Kia ora. Kia ora. Uh, in terms of the report what does it mean to you both on a personal note, being part of this historic um, uh, journey towards mental health and well-being here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, what does it mean to you? I think it's an opportunity to expose what Māori and Pacific have always known, and that is well-being is so broad, and it can be conceptualised through multiple lenses and through different eras in time and people bring with them their own experiences, particularly for Pacifica, those in the diaspora, um, youth population, um, and our growing, our growing relationships and ethnic makeup 
with um, tangas whenua. So I think it provides a really good, a firm platform to be able to springboard off in terms of what are Pacific or what are Māori worldviews around what well-being is. We've known this for like centuries, mm. since the end of time, what well-being means. All of a sudden, it's become a thing. You know, and it's like, gosh, we've been doing this <laughs> forever. But I'm grateful now that we're being asked, well, what is what does well-being mean to you? And it's just providing not different, because I don't think anything's different, but it just adds more strength, I guess, in perspective to mainstream, if not better is it. Yeah, I, I total pull that cord at all for sure. For me, um, what I really like about the the framework is that um, two things, and I mentioned it quickly before, is the tangata whenua, the respect for the tangata whenua view, worldview, mātauranga Māori. As Jermaine said, like this is actually nothing new for us. <laughs> but in terms of, um, you know, broader understanding about what well-being means, what it means for whānau, not just the individual community and society. And we, we share a lot of common um, views and aspects of well-being with our you know Pacific peoples, um, our Fananga from the Pacific, basically. So um, what I really like is that it privileges our worldview and our voice. And just going back to what I said before, I'm really looking forward to the Pacific peoples version of um, what well-being looks like for Pacific peoples, and I'm I'm really thrilled about that. Um, the other thing is that. Uh, in terms of understanding well-being as a part of part and parcel of mental health, you know, mental health and well-being. So it's not about just one bit, it's about the broader. And we often talk about the holistic and stuff like that, which we all know is part of our DNA, basically. But I really love that. And I really love the opportunity for the Wellbeing Commission to actually shine a light on not just, you know, you know, when a lot of people um, are, are classified as mad, bad, and sad, you know, <laughs> this is the complete opposite of that, right. you know, we're awesome, we're going places, we're resilient, there's magic in our whakapapa, in our history, and shining a light on that, as much as realising, yep, we've got a bit more work to do in terms of enabling those who aren't well to get access to high quality services, so it's that really nice balance, strength-based, solution-focused, privileging our voice, I love it. Mm. And part of this, of course, that we bring to it as Māori, as tangata whenua, as Pasifika, is our languages, te reo Māori, our Pasifika languages. So just how important is this in terms of that communication of mental health and well-being? Oh, it's extremely, extremely important. And the fact that it's being recognized on you know within the sector is is transformative because the research shows that when Pacifica young people are connected to their languages their culture they have a strong sense of identity you know that's a protective factor and and they find strength and resilience in that and i think they go hand in hand these this is the language our our, our mother tongue <laughs> is the language of our ancestors and it's the language that will pass through the generations from beginning to to our grandchildren that five generations from now it will be the same language we need to i guess uplift that and restore that and enhance that mana that comes with that so yeah i think it's a beautiful move and i'm just so extremely um appreciative that the our minister um, and Ministry of Pacific Peoples see the value in, in our government. And we don't feel shy anymore about saying, hey, I can speak my mother tongue. For me personally, I can't do that very well, but I'm encouraged to know that it's there. It's part of who I am. It's, it's who we are. Yeah, I, I definitely support that. And, and again, another um, piece of harmony between tangata whenua and Pacific peoples is the value of identity and cultural connection. And I agree with Jemima, there's some awesome research now, um, which we didn't have, you know, five, 10 years ago about cultural identity, well-being, and in, in, in our case, tūranga waiwai being a protective factor, but also an incredibly 
significant ingredient of our well-being as um and intergenerationally as well so you know picking up on the points of post-colonization trauma and the loss of language and identity and how important it is for the government and for um, those who are delivering services to acknowledge that that's actually a thing <laughs> you know 10 years ago the people were going what you know and um now it's becoming more and more recognized as, a, as an issue for us. But I just wanted to um, reflect some data in the report, which spoke a lot about uh, Pacific resilience and you know, the current state of Pacific wellbeing, but linked to cultural identity and um, the importance of Pacific people in terms of how they self-rated um, you know, being themselves. It was quite high actually. Um, so how easy is it for you to, to be your self you know as a Pacific person so 85% of Pacific people said that it was easy to be themselves and I think that's absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. in Aotearoa New Zealand and that was one percentage point higher um, than the um, general population so you know that's a really great strength for Pacific people so the issue for us now is how do we invest in making that go from 85 to 86, 87, 90, 99%. You know, what is it that we can do as a system and across the government to really strengthen that um, that particular piece of data? Mm. And like you say, how do we invest with Pacific, but also how do we engage Pacific? Because the issue around, I shouldn't say issue, but with mental health and wellbeing, are we talking about it more? Are we comfortable? Are we getting there where it's just part of the conversation? I think, well, amidst COVID times, it has, it has jumped somewhat up the priority list for lots of families, for lots of individuals. In my line of work at the university, that was one of the biggest challenges with our students was the mental health and well-being, the stresses, the having to leave school to work, um, be essential workers, and just the stress around that and being confined to potentially some dangerous situations within the home, you know. Um, so yeah, that I think it has, the awareness around it has been lifted. The thing is, is how do we define it as Pacific peoples? The way we define it not necessarily aligns with, you know, Western, it's like, you know, clinical types of frameworks that measure our well-being. It's completely off at times. So how do we then start reframing our own narratives? How do we you know, where the statistics, they're true to a point, but until you do a deep dive and have the cultural nuances of what's impacting our Pacific peoples, then you'll, you'll get a true picture. So I think we need to start having the conversations of what it means to UN, what it means to Cook Islanders, what it means to Samoan, Tonga, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I think that's a start. I love that, Jermaine. Oh, we're talking the same language, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> we are both guests around the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission. But um, yeah, I completely total for that. I, I think that, um, you know, what we we often um, don't celebrate the fact that, um, you know, we have these cultural nuances and strengths which create the ability for us to bounce back from adversity and wrap, our, wrap our, ourselves around each other to Asi and to, to Manaki. So I, I think we need to acknowledge that more often. Um, but talking about the stress and, and the ability to have the conversation, gosh, I've seen such a movement um, over the last five years about that. And we've also seen this um, huge amount of you know, online tools and, you know, 0800 numbers. And um, there's been some magnificent work done by um, Pacific organisations who have really, you know, taken a strong leadership role and gone out there and said, hey, you know, it's actually quite normal to feel distressed, but we can actually provide and support and offer you with some tools and stuff like that. Don't feel, in, in our language, don't feel fakama. it's okay. Mm -hmm you know, reach out. So talking about the work of LeVar and, and many others um, who have, uh, in a sense, um, created not just, you know, compassion and empathy uh, for others uh, through the mahi, but also an awareness and an acceptance that we're actually all human and we have emotions and, it, and it's okay. 
but it's not okay for us to dwell in that, you know, we can help each other and support each other and we can be there for you, yeah. And for me, I noticed with in my own family when we'd have Zoom conversations, we were quite comfortable, and I don't know if we would have been maybe 10, 15 years ago, to say, you know what, I don't feel great. I'm not enjoying, you know, this, uh, the lockdown. This is really getting to me. We felt comfortable to, to talk about it amongst ourselves. And we, you know, we offered each other in that way because we were like, yep, we know we're, we know we're safe. We know we're, you know, in a good place. However, today is just not the good day. So I guess in line with that, um, what can be learned by Māori and Pasifika attitudes to LGBTQIA plus compared with Western world or mainstream? Your thoughts? I happen to be on a Manalangi project, which has been um, funded by Health Research Council of New Zealand and headed by um, Dr. Patrick Thompson. And this is exactly what we're looking at. Again, privileging the narratives of Pacifica Rainbow or, you know, um, and that our, mo our beings of intersectionality are not the same as Pākehā. It's not the same as Bālangi. Um, in fact, in some cases, it can be quite detrimental and it does sideline. So once again, redefining what the current narratives are and, and hearing from those with lived experiences, I think that's truly important. And, and the fact that now our country and the sector is recognizing the place of um, our rainbow communities is, is speaking huge volumes because their mental health well and well-being and um, is hugely impacted, if not at least three times more impacted than say a cis or hetero type person or, or binary. Yeah, I totally took all that. And um, uh, the commission also wanted to, and, and and it's on their work plan to have a rainbow specific corridor about outcomes and what that might look like within the context of the outcome framework here out of Oranga. Yeah, so um, again, really looking forward to that. And, you know, as, as Jemima has said, you know, privileging the narrative, privileging the voice. I really think um, you know language is important, and because language is a contributor to it, helps shape how we think. It helps shape how we practice, and I really value privileging the narrative of um, you know people who 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 you know have their own strengths, their own views, and their own space and place in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So so why wouldn't we do that? Because that's the type of country we should be. Mm. Mm. With uh, the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission um, you know, created, set up earlier this year, where to from here, a lot of work, uh, time, effort into the framework, now into this report, where to from here? Obviously, we're still in the um, infancy of, of the establishment, and it has been a, a long road but very necessary and deep one it hasn't been tick boxy it hasn't been surfacy as we know as Martin Pacific we know good things take time and relationship building is key all the done and all around that before you even put anything down on paper so we're kind of at that stage but the vision has been set um the as a commission with board we are all in tune um, we've got key people on board. I mean, the fact that Sharon, Sharon is on board, you know, it speaks complete volumes to this whole co-papa. So um, it's coming along um, and it's it's taking time, but it, I can assure you that it's it's comprehensive and robust. Kia ora, Jemima. Yeah, um, I, I'm an independent person, so I was, I've been, you know, contracting in to support um, where, where I could, and I, it's a real honour and a privilege, actually, um, and thank you, Jemima, for your kind words. I mean, there's, it's, there's such, the Wellbeing Commission, it's such a joy, actually, to contract into the Wellbeing Commission for several reasons. One, um, Hayden's chairmanship and um, the fact that he's very overtly, and so is the full board, committed 
to um, tiriti, to equity, you know, to privileging the voice of those who deserve the support that we um, can offer as a whole system and also as a commission. So, you know, that, that gives me a lot of joy to come and um, contribute whatever I can to this kaupapa. There were some recommendations in the report associated with, look, let's get cracking. Let's, um, you know, support better outcomes across the whole system. Let's, let's contribute to, let's as in the commission, contribute to the implementation of the government strategy, which is Kia Manawanui Aotearoa, whole systems, outcome focused, delivering, you know, services better. Um, new ways of working. What does that look like? Where's our innovation? How can we privilege whānau voice, community voice, Pacific people's innovation services, et cetera? Um, a really deliberate focus on wellbeing, not just on the service, that service, the service, um, making sure that there is better understanding about the determinants. So poverty, education, housing, employment, things like that. And um, just really calling on the government to seize the moment in terms of understanding the impact of COVID, how that uh, will uh, play out in terms of people's mental health and wellbeing. Um, and then there's some practical stuff like, we've got to get better data, and Jemima talked a little bit about that. We've got to get data that is actually given from a um, whānau voice, Pacific people voice, you know, what matters the most. Because at the moment, most of our data um, is quite deficit focused, like what's wrong, yeah. instead of, hey, actually what's right and how can we um, scale that up. So we did try and get a balance of that type of data, strength-based data, um, knowing that we, you know, we have to know what is not working, but we actually, actually also have to know what is working. So there's some awesome data about the strength and resilience of Pacific communities in Aotearoa from, you know, self-rating, um, life satisfaction, you know, social connectedness. I am actually always get a little bit um, <clears throat> positively um, poo hi hi about the uh, connectedness of Pacific people whānau uh, and <clears throat> how faith has, uh, has, you know, created the ability um, for that level of connectedness, uh, mai rano, you know, continuing on and on. I, I actually really um, have a lot of admiration and respect for that. 69% um, <clears throat> of Pacific people reported they were seldom lonely. That's absolutely fantastic. And also that there was someone to talk to when you were feeling, you know, people were feeling down. 68% um, of Pacific people reported that there was someone they could talk to. So those are all awesome results. And now we need to support and affi those even more. And I think the takeaway for me is that the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission exists. It's here. You've walked the talk. You're here, you've established, and there is a voice there for Aotearoa New Zealand. And on that note, as we're leading into the holidays, into 2022, can I ask you both, what's your message to our community, to our people who may feel they don't have anyone that they can talk to or have friends or family who are struggling? What would you say to them? I think I will speak to the people around them. Um, rather than the individual and to the people around the person that you see isn't you know isn't <clears throat> in balance <clears throat> you reach out to them you do the you do the running around you get the referral numbers you walk with them to the place you make the phone call for them you hug them when they need a hug you tell them every day how much you love them you tell them everything that they could live for and Every, all their strength and I think when people hear that positive affirmation it's a human response when you hear that and when you hear it from your loved ones you know you are just fueling a positive fire and so I think we are all accountable to be able to look you know put that kōrawai of care over our family members or our friends or workmates so I speak to everyone yeah, kia ora, Jemima. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Reach out, reach out. Um, and, you know, there are multiple ways that you can do that. Obviously, you know, to those close in your network, friends, families, 
a trusted advisor, um, you know, anyone who you think can um, give you that uffy, go for it. You know, we're all human. We all have emotions. We all, we all have good and bad days, but know that you're worth it. You're loved um, and, you know, you're valued. So, so reach out, reach out. Yeah. Dr. Jemima Tiatiasi, Sharon Shea, um, our heartfelt thanks to you both and congratulations to you and your team. We look forward to 2022, learning more about Te Rau Tira and the work that we can do uh, as a community uh, for the, the journey and the betterment of our mental health and wellbeing in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We say mālo whapatai. Thank you so much. Mālo lava whapatai. Thank you, Gladys. And just one shout out to my Fangai Fijian sons. So uh, one of my best friends for years and years uh, is Emma Volavola. She lives in, in Sydney. She has two beautiful boys, um, Ben Volavola, who plays professional rugby. He's a Fijian rugby player, but also has played around the world. And Milan Volavola, they're my two Fangai boys. So I couldn't end this interview without <laughs> acknowledging how much I love them and how special they are to, to our Fangai. Absolutely, and wishing you all the very best for Christmas. Here's to a brighter and better 2022. Malo whakatai. Malo Thanks for listening. Visit our website at www.pacificawire.com. We welcome you to like us on Facebook, LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can listen to the full podcast on Spotify. Fa fa ma ia manuia.